So in module one, we're going to be talking about the equipment that you will need to film these uh, weddings. So equipment that you will need to make your films more cinematic. So I will just, in this module, I'll just go over the equipment and kind of um, why you need this equipment and uh, a little bit on how to use it at weddings. And, and um, some of this stuff is like editing software. So how to use the editing software and like why you need this software. Some of this stuff is going to be memory cards, right? So in this module, we're going to be talking about all the equipment that you will need to film a cinematic wedding film. Okay, guys. So I'll also go over the delivery options and the delivery equipment that you will need, kind of like um, USBs and stuff like that. So I will also go over that. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this module. So stay tuned and um, let's get to the equipment that you will need. Okay, so when it comes to cameras, um, it all depends on what you're comfortable with. So some of you guys probably already have cameras right now that you use to film weddings. And some of you maybe you don't even have a camera yet. And uh, you purchase this course to kind of see what you need before you go out and film weddings. But um, yeah, you will need a camera. You will need a camera that is good in low light situations. So for that, I strongly recommend the Sony A7S. So you can get the A7S1, you can get the A7S2, and you can get the new release from Sony also with A7S3, which is definitely a beast in low light and um, it's way more advanced than the one and the two. But um, this one right here in my hands is the one. This is the A7S1 and guys, this is still a good camera. Um, and right now the price probably went down. When I got this, it was 2,700. So you can probably find this now from maybe I think 1,700 or maybe even less than that, right? So yeah, guys, so this camera is a beast uh, in low light situations. You will need it for weddings, especially for receptions cause receptions um, most receptions, well, most 80, like 95% of the weddings I've done, all the receptions have been during the nighttime. So that's why you will need a, a camera that's good in low light situations, such as the Sony A7S. Okay, guys, I can only speak for this camera because I've personally used it for like at least over 50 weddings at this point. So um, this is a very good camera. I really recommend um, you guys check it out. So as far as like cameras, there's um, other cameras that you can use. When you scroll down um, this video, when you go down on this below this video, um, I will have some suggestions for beginners. I will have some suggestions for um, pro cameras. And um, I will have some high end cameras as well. And um, the good thing about this course is all these recommendations will be getting updated um, every probably like six months. I'm not gonna try and update every three months, so probably every six months, you know, because I mean, something that was good six months ago can still be good this month. So I'm not trying to be on some like, like keep getting new equipment, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna keep recommending new equipment. If some equipment is still good, I'll, I'll just leave it on here. But the good thing about this course is if I made a mistake or if I need to add more content, I can just um, upload the content and tell you guys to just go and check it out or whatever, or you're going to see it when you go through it. But um, that's the good thing about this course is I, I'm going to be adding content as we go, right? Um, so that's that, guys. But for right now, I have enough content that you need to get you to make cinematic wedding films. So I'm not saying like, oh, there's not enough content right now, but there is, there is enough content for you to make cinematic wedding films. But I'm just saying that I will be updating the course um, every few months just to kind of like keep up with uh, what's going on right now, right? So as you go down, you will see some recommendations that I've made for beginner. For uh, I have beginner cameras and then I have um, pro cameras and then I have the high end cameras, okay? So all those are recommendations I've made. So high end cameras, um, I have high end cameras. And then um, I also have um, drones, recommendations for drones. And uh, um, I have some uh, small cameras such as the GoPros and uh, DJI Osmo Pocket. 
So I'll show you how I kind of use those like um, at a wedding, like the GoPro. I'll show you some footage later on, you know, to show you how I, I use them. And um, yeah, so um, also when you scroll down, you're going to see some questions I have like, oh, so why these cameras? Why am I recommending these cameras? Why am I not recommending cameras such as the Red Epic or the higher end cinema cameras? Well, the answer is the pro uh, the production budget. So the production budget is, of course, what why I recommend these cameras because these cameras are all I think mostly under how much are they? Because I also have the links that you can go and actually check them out at um, on Amazon. Okay, I have my affiliate links here, but um, yeah, which is like you don't even get paid a lot. But anyways, they're there. So most of these cameras are like less than $5,000. I think most of them are less than $5,000. The reason is because why they're less than $5,000 is because why that price range? Why not a Red Epic? The majority of wedding filmmakers, you know, they're under that $5,000 range. And if you go above that $5,000 range, you gotta be maybe somewhere in LA or New York or these high end places where people are willing to pay you that much. And uh, you got to have like at least high end equipment and a crew like, you know, people when people pay you a lot of money, they expect way more from you. So you got to have all that infrastructure in place. I'm assuming everybody in this course makes less than that per wedding. Right. And uh, I mean, if maybe some of you guys are like make that much money and you're still watching this course. It might be that um, you want to maybe get more skills or just trying to like, you know, trying to see what I got to offer you guys. But um, yeah, so like the reason why I don't recommend like a camera over ten thousand dollars is because you don't get paid that much for weddings. OK, you don't get your budget is not, you know, the wedding, the majority of wedding filmmakers get at least less than uh, five thousand dollars. So that's my reasoning for these cameras and why I chose these cameras, because at least like, you know, just from one wedding, let's say if you get paid three thousand dollars from that one wedding, you can buy one of these high end cameras in my category. But if you're looking at the Red Epic, those are like fifteen thousand dollar cameras, twenty thousand dollar cameras, fifty thousand dollar cameras. So how many weddings are you going to need to do to buy that kind of a camera? You know, you're going to be you're going to be paying your loan off or whatever for, you know, for for couple of years or whatever right it's like buying a car almost so i don't so you can get good footage you can get good quality just from these cameras that i put here you don't need a red epic you don't need all these like you know steven spielberg kind of cameras okay guys so don't look here and be like oh high-end cameras why don't you have like this and that guys these are good cameras right here so the drones i also put drones that at least can good quality and they'll do the job okay you don't need no five thousand uh inspire i like you some some of you guys have that but you you can look at these weddings and like be wowed by the footage and they got it on a damn uh, Ma uh mavic pro or in this case i have a dji uh pro phantom pro and those those drones are still good why do you need a drone that's ten thousand dollars just to be like oh ten thousand dollar drone but I'll still, I'll probably get way better footage than you with the freaking Mavic Pro. And you just be sitting there, oh, but my drone is more expensive. So what? It's about the skills. Like, what are you bringing to the table? You know, so these drones I've recommended are good here too. All this equipment I'm recommending here, all this equipment is good for weddings. You don't need no fancy $10,000 stuff, guys. So that's what I'm saying. So just kind of read down. Go down this video and uh, read um, about the cameras and why I kind of um, suggested those cameras. And uh, it's kind of it's kind of going to make sense to you. It's not a lot of reading to do. Just some just a little bit of more information, just a little bit more. So that's why, guys. So that's on um, cameras. So let's move on to audio uh, equipment. All right, so when it comes to lenses, what kind of lenses do you need? And uh, why are lenses um, important to wedding filmmakers and to getting cinematic shots, right? 
So lenses, you know, they play a huge role. So the better your lens is, the better, you know, performance it, you will get from it. Basically, you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. And a good lens will get you, as I said, better quality. A good lens will get you better quality, guys. So in weddings, you will need at least three types of lenses, okay? You will need three types of lenses. And you will need a prime lens, you will need a zoom lens, and you will need a macro lens. So with the macro lens part, you don't really need it, but um, if you have the money to get it, I recommend as you go on in your journey as a wedding filmmaker to get a macro lens because you will need that lens to film um, small things such as rings, and just like details on a dress and just the small little things they look so beautiful when you shoot them uh, with the macro lens it just gets those detail shots perfectly right so you will need these three lens guys the prime lens a zoom lens and a macro lens and uh, you also need an ultra wide um, angle lens uh, which I didn't put here but you will need that as well I will also attach a video um, to this module I will attach a video that I did um, um, or about lenses just kind of talking about the three types of lenses that every wedding filmmaker needs so I will attach it so look for that video down um, in addition to this video but yeah so um, as I say you know you will need these um, three types of lenses the better the lens you have the better quality you will get from that lens so all these lens guys they matter guys if the if you have a nice lens you know, of course, you will get nice. Um, if you have a good lens, you will get good quality. Just like this lens right here. This is a Sony G lens right here. So it's an 18 to 105 G lens. So this lens is, you know, it's a beautiful lens. I've used this lens on uh, multiple um, jobs, wedding jobs. And I also have um, other lenses such as the Canon 70 to 200 lens. And um, I also have a couple of Zeiss lenses. So yeah, guys, the lens matters as well, guys. Um, and the better the lens, the better optics you will get. So don't skimp out on the lens, guys. Okay, don't be like, oh, don't go cheap on lenses, guys. Don't go cheap on lenses. Go expensive on lenses. So don't just rely on the body. You can have a good body, but if you don't have a good lens on it, you know, it's like um, having a Ferrari and having um, like, let's say, uh, uh, outdoor tires or something like maybe like, let's say, uh, like um, outback tires on a Ferrari. It's not going to perform as good as it should. So the tires matter as well. That's why you see Formula One when they're racing in Formula One, depending on, you know, the day, depending on the road, depending on the weather depending on a lot of factors, they switch the tires. They don't switch tires just because to switch tires. There's a reason why they switch those tires, okay? Um, when it's raining, they have rain tires and they have specific rain tires for the specific road, for the specific um, uh, weather type as well. You know, it can be hot and raining and they, they're not gonna put the tires they put when it's cold and raining. So that just shows you that all these details matter. It's not just the car, you know, it's all the things, the 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 airflow and all that stuff, the, how it takes the air, all that stuff matters. So same thing with your cameras, guys. Um, the lenses matter. The lens that you put on the, ca uh, on the camera matters as well. So uh, make sure you get good lenses so that way, you know, you can get good quality footage. Okay, guys, good quality footage. So some of these lenses, especially like, you know, the lenses with the, you know, 1.2 apertures and the 2.8 apertures, they will enable you to get a uh, more shallower depth of field, which is, uh, that just looks more cinematic. So we'll get into the whole cinematic stuff in module two, but um, in this module, we're just going over the equipment. So let's go to audio um, devices. All right, guys, audio equipment, audio equipment. So audio plays a huge role in creating a cinematic wedding film, guys. Audio creates a huge role. Some people go as far as saying that um, you can have like shitty video, but as long as your audio is good, 
people will stick around. But if you have shitty audio and a good video, um, you know, that's not very good. So you will need good audio for your wedding films to make them cinematic because we're going to be capturing vows. We're going to be capturing the couples reading letters to each other. We're going to be capturing the officiant, um, you know, officiate the wedding, the ceremony and stuff like that. So you will need good audio. This shotgun mic right here, this is a shotgun mic. It's called a shotgun mic. It's a, a mic that you put on top of your camera, right? So you put that on top of your camera like this. And um, that's what they call a shotgun mic. So this mic is good um, when you are capturing like, you know, audio in a room. Let's say uh, the bride, uh, the bridal prep room, like the bride is getting ready. And you want to um, capture the audio in that room, capture good audio. If something happens like, you know, maybe her dad walks in or just something unexpected happens. This mic right here is way better than the built in um, camera mic. So that's when I use the shotgun mic. I usually use the shotgun mic. Um, actually stays on the camera the whole time. Um, I don't know. Some, I take it off sometimes, but it usually stays on the camera. Um, it's better audio than your belt-in audio for the camera, guys, okay? And um, another audio device that I use is um, the Zoom um, H1 right here. They have a new version of this. My mics right here fell out. Um, because I don't even use I don't even use those mics that are here that way here. I just I was just using the the lapel mic for this. So this is good for um to put on body like you know on the bride or on the groom or on the officiant. These are good and the good thing is these are only hundred dollars for brand new ones. They're cheap, but the audio is I can vouch for this. This was like my first ever Zoom H. Well, see, I don't even have the things here. These are good. And I upgraded to the to the uh, H4N Pro, so this is what I use now. And um, I also use the the Tascam, but I lo I love this one over that. I love this one, and I can vouch for this because I've used this a lot of times, and it hasn't failed me. Just make sure you turn it off before you um you stop recording before you just unplug the thing because that's what a DJ did to me one time and uh, it messed me up. So yeah, guys, so you will need um, good audio to capture um, for your weddings because we're going to be making a cinematic wedding film. OK, so you're going to need good audio because uh, we're going to be using um, the bride's vows and the groom's vows and just the letters to each other to kind of put over the wedding highlights. So that's why you will need good audio and you will see later why you need good audio devices, guys. You need good audio. So as usual, when you scroll down um, this video, I've added some recommendations that you can check out as well as cables and um, just accessories that come with audio gear. OK, guys, so you can check that out and um, you can check out all these high end and you can also check out the, the shotgun microphones and these kind of the lapel ones, the Zoom H1N, the brand new one. The new one is very I like the way the design is. So you can go check that out, guys. Um, so you will need good audio to capture um, for weddings, guys. You will need good audio devices for your wedding films because you're trying to capture, you know, perfect audio. So that way, you know, the audio has to complement the video. You can have a badass video and have shitty audio. So make sure, guys, you don't go cheap on the audio. This is just $100 and the brand, the, the new version is um right here with all the accessories it's 139 like this is cheap guys this, this is really good but yeah guys so good audio is needed for good weddings guys so let's move on to the next equipment which is lighting equipment guys so when it comes to lighting uh you will need lighting equipment when it comes to weddings you will need lighting equipment so lighting equipment such as this these are on camera lights guys um this is the old stuff that i used to that i that i was using when i first started doing weddings back in uh 2013 2014 2015 i think i was still using these i was putting batteries in here and uh, as you can see yeah i was 
I got two of these. So you know that I was actually using these. Okay, guys, I don't even know how this comes out like that. Yes. Anyway, so I was using these on camera lights, but these are just too big, guys. But hey, I'm not going to shit on them. They did their job. But now I got this right here, which is called the Vigem. Does the same thing, but it's as small as a phone, guys. Does the same thing, but it's as small as the phone. So I recommend uh, you guys go get the, this right here, which is... Um, damn, this thing is still going up. It's not even on 50% yet. Anyway, so this is the Vigem, guys. I did a whole review on this light right here. And um, I will link that review down here. I will put that review down just to have additional, just so you can get additional information on this equipment, guys. But yeah, so this is the light right here. It's an on-camera light. It's perfect because it's small and compact. And, um, you know, this is it's perfect, guys. Anyway, you check out the review, but you will need on-camera light. And um, you will need it um, for, like, uh, receptions. You will need it for running gun situations. Um, so I will link that those videos down so you can check them out, how to use the lights and why you need these lights. But you will need the lights. And as we go on um, in this course, you will see me on location using these lights, okay? You will, sh you will see me using this on location um, in the uh, behind the scenes and everything. So that way you can see how I use it and stuff like that. So. You will need on camera lights and you will also need standalone lights. So the standalone lights, um, I've um, recommended some here, which are a good price, $129. You can go cheaper than that. But guys, you don't need $1,000 lights. You don't need $1,000 equipments if you can get something that can do the same job for less, guys, okay? Especially if you're just starting out. But if you like intermediate, then you can get some um, higher end stuff. But... When you're just starting, don't get food, guys, because that's what stops a lot of people from starting because they say, oh, no, I need to get an A7S three. I need to get a, the, the biggest light. I need to get an aperture light, 200, whatever. Like, I've never even had a, a light over $200, guys. All my lighting equipment has been less than that, and they still work. I still get good films, right? So just know how to use it, and you don't need expensive stuff, guys. Just start and, um, you know, just improve your skills, guys. So you will need standalone lights. And um, mostly the standalone lights, I use them for receptions. And sometimes when I'm just filming the bride and groom outside, um, where I use a battery. And sometimes I use them um, when I'm just filming the bride in uh, the room. So that's that for this equipment for the lights. So let's move on to the accessories that you will need. Okay, guys, so when it comes to shipping and handling, um, I'm not really going to talk much about this. I'll talk much about the shipping and handling at the end of uh, the module. I think it's the last module in this in this course. So when it comes to shipping and handling, I'm basically talking about what you will need, the equipment you will need to, to ship and handle. So you will, of course, need envelopes. You will need SD cards. I now I only deliver my weddings through USB um, USB flash drives. Um, they're cheaper, and I think everybody knows what they are now, and everybody has them. Kind of like back in the days when everybody had like floppy disks. You know, now you can use um, these um, USB things and um, flash drives, and also like DVDs. These are now the new DVDs. I don't do DVDs anymore. So when I'm delivering wedding projects, I always use the USB flash drives. Um, I don't use the mini SD cards just cause, you know, um, some people might not have them. And um, it's more easier. Everybody has USB. USB is like now becoming, you know, the universal kind of thing. So um, yeah, so USB is what I use to deliver um my wedding projects guys so that's the equipment so we're gonna move into module two now so when it comes to editing software 
there's three softwares that I can recommend and there's a lot more editing softwares out there, but I'll personally. So when it comes to editing software, there's a lot of softwares that I can recommend and there's a lot of softwares out there, but these three are my personal favorites. These three are the ones that I currently use. So Final Cut Pro, um, is what I use mostly for like editing wedding trailers and wedding highlights. So Final Cut Pro, I really recommend you start learning into, you start learning Final Cut Pro. I have a few courses on Final Cut Pro, not a few courses. I have a few videos on it and I will, um, probably link the videos down, um, down there. Um, I'll attach the videos to this topic but I have a lot of um, videos on Final Cut Pro, so make sure you learn that. Premiere Pro, I use it mainly for the full length wedding videos. So um, I have tutorials on that as well, on how I use it for that. And when it comes to the editing part of um, this section, you're gonna see how I use it to edit the full wedding videos. So these are the software, the editing software that, that I recommend, I personally use, and I personally recommend, so Final Cut Pro. Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. Now DaVinci is a little bit more advanced. So um, it might take a little bit of while for you to like kind of get used to it and the interface and stuff like that. But um, Premiere Pro's interface and Final Cut Pro's interface, I love the interfaces because they just simplify everything, you know, but DaVinci Resolve looks a little bit intimidating when you're first you know getting into it but you know anything everything you have to learn and it's not rocket science you can learn this software so same thing like photo photoshop's looks like you know photoshop looks intimidating to people who are just starting but after a while they're like oh okay blah 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 so you know if you're really looking into like getting into deep into coloring and stuff like that then davinci resolve because it's used in a lot of movies as well. But um, I'll stick to Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro. I've used these softwares for the longest now and they keep improving every time they release a new version. It's always improved in new coloring techniques and all this and that. So Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, I really recommend those. And DaVinci Resolve is more for, little if you wanna go a little bit advanced, but it's there, it's an option, it's there. And if you already use DaVinci Resolve, then good. So that's the editing software that you will need to um, edit cinematic weddings. So let's move on to this right here. Okay guys, so editing hardware. So what kind of editing hardware do you need for your wedding films, cinematic wedding films, right? So the better you know your editing hardware which is your computer the you know the better the faster you know you will get a video done so um if you you know you're shooting like 4k files 8k files 1080p whatever um you won't be able to edit that footage smoothly if your editing hardware is not up to you know standards so um, all that plays, the computer plays a huge role on how, you know, you handle your editing, you know, so the, the, the hardware plays a huge role. It's not just the software. Well, the software doesn't really play a huge role. It's the hardware that, you know, makes the software run smooth. So the hardware, which is this thing here, the laptop or your desktop or whatever is, the hardware that you use to edit um, wedding films, right? I mean, you might go as advanced as, you know, using stuff like um, DaVinci Resolve, like, you know, analog stuff, like um, not actually software. You might, I, you actually might use hardware for editing, but that's more into the advanced stuff. That's more into like when you're making movies and stuff like that. You can use it for weddings, but that's just an overkill, you know, unless you're getting paid like, $20,000 a wedding, then you can go do, uh, invest in that kind of equipment because that equipment is not cheap. That's like equipment that they use in actual 
you know, Netflix type movies, you know. Anyways, so when it comes to editing hardware, we're talking about the computer here, okay? We're talking about the computer. So what do you need to look for in a computer that you will be using to edit? So that's what I'm talk I'm going to be talking to you guys about here. So we're going to be talking about the editing hardware. So what do you need to look for in a computer for you to um, edit, to use it for editing uh, weddings, cinematic weddings? So what we need basically is a computer that's going to be fast enough for us to edit because you don't want lag. It's just, you know, it slows you down and it's frustrating to a computer that's always lagging and it's slow. That's why I don't use Windows. I'm sorry. But of course, you can update Windows computers and I've never used them in like maybe 10 years or something. So maybe they've improved now or maybe I got to get a more expensive um, Windows computer, but I've not had good luck with Windows, so I'll stick to the Mac. Anyway, so there are four main things you need to look for when looking for um, an editing software. So uh, number one is um, <clears throat> you need to look at the CPU. So what is a CPU? So a CPU is basically just the core processing unit in a computer. It's like the brains of the computer. So the CPU, you need to make sure, you know, CPU is good. Okay, guys, um, the next thing you need to look at is the GPU. So the GPU is basically like the graphics card um, of the computer. And the graphics card, like, you know, it um, enables, like, people that play, like, let's say, that play games on their computer, you know, online games and uh, stuff like that. Um, they need a lot of uh, GPU. They need a computer with good GPU. So that's like a graphics card. So even us, like, you know, when we're editing weddings, we're going to be, we're dealing with pictures and motion. Like we're dealing with all that editing power. We're dealing with all those graphics, you know. So we need a good GPU. So you got to make sure your GPU is good. So when you scroll down, I have an explanation of each of these things, the CPU, the GPU, the RAM, the HDD, SSD. I have explanations of what all these things do and what to look for specifically when you're trying to buy a computer to edit. OK, guys, so the GPU, that's what it does, it's a graphics processing thing. Um, and then uh, the RAM is a random access memory. So the more RAM you have, the better. So everything is down on uh, is down. You can go check that out. Um, the H the HDD, which is the hard disk drive, which is like your hard drive. Basically, you need a lot of memory on the hard drive. You need a lot of space, basically, um, for your computer to be functioning, to be running well, right? So um, then, and then the SSD, which is um, the solid state drive. So the SSD is just like it's it's actually it's basically the HDD but uh it's more advanced and um it has like less moving parts than the than the basic um you know hdd that we have so like if you drop it or stuff like that you're still gonna you know you won't need to worry about it as much as if you drop um an hdd uh external whatever device so stuff like that so um the so the solid states are like you know the new technology so, but another, the only, the only thing that's with these things is they're too expensive. They're not too expensive, but they're expensive. So you might get a SSD, which has one terabyte and it's probably going to cost you like a thousand dollars. This is just like a estimation. And then a HDD one terabyte might cost you like $200. So you see the price differences, you know, it's, it's a lot. So um, if you want to be doing like fat, like if you want to be editing from your SSD, then um, it's good to use. If you want to be editing from an external hard drive, SSD will work faster and stuff like that. And if you want to go on the road with it, you know, but um, honestly, I'll leave it up to you to look into what you really need. But um, I don't own a SSD at this point or the external hard drives that I have, um, HDDs. So there you go. So I have all this information down here. Um, so make sure when you're looking to buy a computer to edit, 
make sure the cpu has five cores minimum anything over this means faster processing times make sure the gpu is fast which is the graphics um cards thing make sure it's fast um because um the faster it is the faster you your video rendering processing time will be make sure your ram is at least 16 gigabytes minimum anything over 32 gigabytes is good and so on and so forth make sure your hdd is over one terabyte and has enough space uh, new Macs and Windows systems are now being equipped with SSDs, which is really good. Okay, guys, so it means um, fast processing speeds and uh, yeah. So I have some recommendations down here. You guys can check those out and um, just do your due diligence before getting, uh, you know, editing hardware. So that's with this, guys. So let's move on to number topic number... When it comes to external storage, external storage is important because that's where you're going to be storing all your files. That's where you're going to be putting all the files. So that way you can get back to the files. Um, that way some people actually work from the external storage. Like me sometimes, actually most of the times I don't like, I don't really put uh, the wedding um, files on my computer. I usually put them on external hard drives and then I work from those hard drives. Uh, I connect the hard drives to my computer and then I work from there, you know, in the softwares like Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro. So most of the times my external hard drives are always connected to my iMac. But, um, you know, it's always good to have, uh, you know, backups on top of backups because you never know when, you know, something might happen to external storage. You know, maybe accidentally it falls, depending on what kind of um, external storage you have. You might have the big um, tower. That one might be, might not fall, but maybe your child pours water. or so, You never know. Or maybe electricity malfunctions somehow and uh, fries up your drive. So, um, yeah, so it's always good sometimes to always have backups on top of backups. So I always have at least two backups. So right now I just did a wedding and, uh, all my footage right now is on the SD cards and it's on one of my external hard drives. So for now, I'm going to still leave it on those SD cards, um, until maybe I have another wedding and then I'll see how I can kind of put the files on another drive, not the one that I already put them on right now. Just for, you know, like after I edit the video and send it to the client, I really don't, um, you know, go hard on, on backing those files up because I mean, that's money, you know, they already paid me money. So, and um, even if I give them back their money, a wedding is just like, it's priceless, you know? So I always try and take care of my client's footage um, up until the time that I, you know, send them the package and everything. I always try and take extra care because after I send them everything, you know, my job is done. Anyway, so external storages are so important, guys, because like once you lose that footage, like, you know, you are pretty much done. You got to refund all the money that they paid you plus you gotta look stupid plus you get bad reviews and it's not it's like you, you just don't do that guys so always try and back up um your files so you know as far as external hard drive comes as far as equipment there's a lot of um equipment like there's a lot that goes into the hard drive so there's um there's here there's h uh there's hdds um and then there's um, SSDs. So when it comes to SSD, like honestly, SSDs are more expensive and well, they're expensive and they're faster, but they're expensive. And um, those are solid state drives. But the good thing is um, the, the, H, the HDDs, you know, they're less expensive, but they're a little bit slower. 
than the um, SSDs. So it depends on what you want to do. Uh, me personally, I have um, HDDs. I don't use um, the solid state drives because I mean, they're expensive. They're expensive and I'm not doing, you know, my computer is, is fast as it is right now. So unless you do a lot of editing from the external hard drives to your um your computer and you need it fast like that or you need to send files right away you need to do all this stuff right away then you can look into ssds but if you have time and you know you can work on your pace then you really don't need to be rushing things like that H hdds are pretty much good for a lot of applications so um it's all up to you guys i've put a lot of um um information for you down here on the page just go down on this topic and um just read up on it and um i talk about windows i talk about uh mac i talk about checking um on uh your smart status which is s-m-a-r-t you can check that in your disk utilities and on windows um, I don't know what Windows uses now. It's been a while since I used Windows. I was like, I was like in high school last time I used Windows. I've put a few recommendations here that you can check out as far as portable drives that you can use on things like this, like your laptops where you can bring with you. So I've put a few recommendations, but you can buy whatever you want. And as far as um, the hard drives, um, I've, put, uh, I've also put some here that are like stationary ones, um, some recommendations. And uh, when you're talking about online storage, like on, online storage is like the ultimate, you know, backup option because you can always access files if when they're online, you can access them from anywhere. So, and plus when you back up stuff on online, you don't have to worry about, you know, losing your files or dropping an external hard drive. But these applications can really be pricey depending on how much um storage you need every month um they really charge a lot of money but you know you're always going to have those files so it's up to you if you want to use online but i think online is the safest way even though you know downloading uploading takes a little bit of time as long as it's good if you have um if you have a fast wi-fi and stuff but it takes a while so that's that and then, um, yeah, so always have, always back up your files. And um, these are the external hard drives I recommend as far as equipment. But uh, you can look it up and you can read up on external hard drives to see which will best fit your needs, guys. All right. What kind of accessories are you going to need um, to film cinematic weddings? So um, when you scroll down here on this video, when you scroll down, you will see um, accessories. I have tripods, I have um, gimbals, and then I have some um, fluid heads, such as this one right here. I have, um, wow, that's it. Just, I guess, gimbals and uh, tripods and a monopod. Personally, I've never used a monopod at a wedding. So I'm not going to lie to you and sit here and say, oh, go get a monopod. Because honestly, I don't see the point of using a monopod. Because you you can't just like let it stay there and go somewhere else, right? You need it wherever you go with you. So in this day and age, all you need is this. You need a gimbal. Because I'm assuming the reason why people had monopods were kind of to keep the shots steady, like when they're standing. But now you have gimbals, so I don't think you need a monopod. And as far as a slider, um, I, I stopped using sliders for weddings now. So um, I'm giving away my slider. Let me know if you want that. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, so um, gimbals, guys. You need a gimbal. Um, you need a good tripod. So why this equipment? Let's, let's talk about, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. So you will need a tripod to keep your shots nice and steady because during the wedding, you will do a lot of standing, okay? Especially during the ceremony. So you will need to keep your camera stationary, okay, guys? During the ceremony, you will need to keep your, um, your, your camera stationary. So you will need a good tripod 
to just like um, sit there and uh, film while everything goes on. So you will need a tripod for that. So when you're first beginning, if you're a beginner, right? If you're a beginner, um, you could get any tripod. Honestly, any tripod is better than no tripod, guys. Trust me, any tripod is better than no tripod. So as a beginner, I recommend um, you just get any kind of tripod. But um, as you get advanced, you need to get you need to get a tripod with a fluid head, or you just need to get a separate fluid head, and you need to get a tripod, a good tripod like this with steady legs. I've put this in the recommendations down below. It's not expensive. It's like 60 bucks, I think it is. How much is this? On my recommendations, it's um, 89, but you can find this cheaper. This is a newer, um, this is from newer right here. The brand is newer, and um, check those guys out. I actually love the equipment. I don't know if I have something else from them, but um, I love newer. So newer, if you're watching this, you better spend sponsor my course so i could give some people some percentage off your stuff anyway so yeah so i have um yeah so i have the the tripod you need a good try when i first started guys don't look at me and be like oh look at that equipment honestly when i first started in 2013 i didn't have this i got this two years later or maybe even three years later when i got the manfrotto head and um i didn't have this i had um a shoulder rig thing that i was using a cheap shoulder rig thing that was uh like how much was that like i think eighty dollars and um as far as tripods i bought a walmart tripod I, yes i bought a forty dollar tripod at walmart and i still filmed the wedding guys so if you're still starting out don't don't be pressured and think like oh you're not gonna get a wedding right if you don't get this stuff that i'm putting here you know you could do these people that have um that probably have less than this here, but they can do a better film than me. So it's all about the skills, guys. It's all about how creative you are. So all this stuff here, it just complements um, your skills, okay? All this stuff just complements your skills. You can be the best, um, you can have the best bow and arrow, but if you play against the best archer, you're gonna lose, because he has the skills, guys. He has the skills, so it's all about the skills, guys. It's all about the skills. Um, it's not about the equipment. The equipment just kind of like help you out, so it's better to have good equipment, but guys, skills, me personally, I think it's skills over equipment, but um, the equipment help you out, um, perform your skills even better. They advance your skills. So if you have skills, you already have a competitive edge over your competition. But when you add this kind of equipment, it just like makes you a beast. <clears throat> it just makes you a beast. So, and another thing why all this equipment is necessary is because it makes you look more professional. Okay, you can be the best filmmaker and have like shitty equipment and you're not going to look pro to other people, to potential clients who might want to book you. But if you have a setup like this, and you have all this badass stuff on it, you know, you're gonna look professional even if you are just a beginner. So that's a good thing sometimes that the pro equipment makes you look um, more professional, guys. So that's with the equipment, guys. Um, so you will need um, the tripod to kind of make your shots more, um, to hold your shots for ceremonies because ceremonies, you will um, do longer shoots during the ceremonies. So you will need a tripod for that. And um, this fluid head right here is good to, you know, it's to get the smooth shots, guys. So the fluid head I recommend. Um, I recommend this one specifically because this is the only fluid head that I've ever used. And just when I saw this right here, this gap right here, I was like, that shit, it looks badass, guys. So this one, I've put it down here. Oh, no. If you go down, you're going to see this specific one that I um, got. I need to get another one. I just love these bridging things here. So when we go down to gimbals, guys, I have the Zhiyun Crane. This is the first Zhiyun Crane, I think. I think this is the first one. But um, now they have more advanced cranes. They have the DJI Ronin S. So I put all this down here. This this is cheap. 
389 guys that's really cheap because when that came out it was a little bit more expensive but um yes and then they have the Zion crane 3s uh i guess that's the one that rotates or something like that so i you look into all that stuff but yeah gimbals are good to get steady shots especially at weddings you want to get tracking shots and this whole course is about making your wedding film cinematic right so teaching you how to film and also teaching you how to make them more cinematic so how to, not even more how to make them cinematic so how you make them more, more cinematic so how you make them cinematic is um having smooth shots just like in hollywood right <clears throat> so yeah just like uh, the movies you see so a gimbal is going to help make your shots more cinematic it's going to help your shots look more um smooth and just the the movement is just like this changed the wedding industry guys this changed just not even the wedding industry this changed the film industry this little piece of equipment single-handedly just like shook the film industry so guys i really recommend this guys um i don't care if you get the cheaper one but just get something that's gonna you know make your shots steady nice and steady it's gonna make your shots look more professional the production value is gonna be high um and yeah guys you need a gimbal i can't stress this enough you need a gimbal so that's with the accessories that you need for right now to make your films cinematic so let's move on to memory cards so memory cards so what kind of memory cards do you need so i have a diagram below this video to kind of explain the different numbers on the memory card and what they mean so on the sd card sorry so all those numbers on the sd card all those little initials whatever means something so when you scroll down this video you will see what each of them mean and um yeah so you the the better the memory card guys memory uh, memory cards sd cards guys they matter so i'm not going to stay too much on this equipment here so just go down and look at what all those little numbers and initials mean because it's going to help you a lot when you're selecting a memory card guys so memory cards play a huge role just like when i was explaining the formula one thing how everything on the card plays a huge role right memory cards um play a huge role too when it comes to your camera so make sure you get the the right memory card for your camera i have a diagram below this video explaining all the little numbers and uh initials and what they mean on the card right i will have that diagram for you to download and um so you can look at it whenever you want to look at it but yeah so um yeah guys so i will have that for you to download so you can look and see what all these little numbers mean like video speed the type of card uh, what uh, uhs rating means speed class rating all this capacity all this stuff maximum read speed all this it will explain everything so just read um a little bit down below on uh, what memory cards do for you and um download the pdf on um yeah on the on the diagram so you can kind of like get to it whenever you want to get to it but uh, it's going to be very useful so memory cards play a huge role when it comes to um your camera guys so you have to select the right one for what you want to do so make sure that um you check this out you check the memory cards out and what they do so let's move on to external storage guys 